Hello everyone, welcome to Switch Up, as we once again have a look at some of the games coming out for the Switch in this upcoming week. As we always do, we'll start off by having a look at a couple of games first that either we never covered before in one of these videos, or have released without ever being on the coming soon page on the eShop, and then of course we'll jump into this week's games. We're going to cover the period from the 13th of February up until the 19th. What's coming out this week? Well, let's find out. Okay, starting with those few games that are already out then, and the first one is Toho Lunar Nights. This is a fan-made Metroidvania based on the Toho Project series. Now, I don't know a lot about these games or this series, but I think I'm right in saying that they started off as bullet hell shooters and have since made their way into various other genres, and that it has a huge community of fan-made media. From what I've heard, this Metroidvania is actually very tight in terms of the mechanics, although it's not particularly long, coming in from what I've read at about 6 hours. It uses a really charming pixel art style and sells for £13.99, possibly only one for fans of the series, I'm not sure how much prior knowledge you'd need, but it is out now if you are interested. And then we have a huge release, which will already be out by the time you're watching this video. This is Romance of the Three Kingdoms 14, Diplomacy and Strategy Expansion Pack Bundle. Now the Romance of the Three Kingdoms game series has been going for a long long time now as you can probably ascertain by the 14 in the title and started way back in the 80s, possibly 85 I think, on PC, Amiga, I think it was also on the NES. Now I've only ever played one of these games, that was one of the Super Nintendo games and it was via downloading it on one of the virtual consoles as I don't think these games got a European release on the SNES back in those days. It's based on the Romance of the Three Kingdoms novel, one of the most revered pieces of Chinese literature which is dated back to the 14th century century, as well as the historical text Records of the Three Kingdoms which dates back to the 3rd century. This is a strategy game where you'll need to be conquering provinces, trading with other foreign nations with the inclusion of Eurasia for the first time in the series, as well as setting your tactics for battle, with new elements for this game including geographic advantages and outlander cities. This version has a War Chronicles mode which depicts famous scenes from the novel in short scenarios that you can try and complete. It's selling for £57.99, plus there is even a bundle that's more expensive than that, but includes the season pass as well as the base game. Moving on to the upcoming games then, and the first one is called Steamroll. This describes itself as an adventure puzzle game with a touch of mini golf about it. In this steampunk setting it says you play as a young engineer on his first day at work. You are working in a mine when a disaster means it's about to collapse. At this point you climb inside your steam powered rolling vehicle and will need to use it to try and escape the maze like mine as it crumbles around you. Gameplay wise then you'll be solving puzzles to try and get out with the mini golf side of it as it mentioned being about measuring your trajectory and trying to be precise in how you move the spherical vehicle. You can cause explosions or create ramps all in the aid of trying to get out. It's selling for £8.99 or your regional equivalent which will be at the bottom of the screen now. Next we have a quite cheap shoot 'em up going for just £4.49, published by East Asia Soft called Void Gore. This is from the people that made Project Starship, a game which itself came to the Switch a couple of months ago and describes itself as a nightmarish arcade shoot 'em up experience. You are descending through the levels of hell and trying to get rich in the process, earning coins as you take down supernatural horrors in what it calls a pulse pounding vertical scrolling style. You can spend these coins on upgrades to keep yourself going and it also includes online leaderboards. It says you can chain kills to increase your multiplier whilst going for those high scores and also that the levels are randomised each time. If you are interested in this one, it's coming out on the 17th. On the 18th is a game called Speed Limits, which I'll be honest, I wasn't going to include at first based on its incredibly boring thumbnail, but when I did watch the trailer, credit where it's due, it's got quite an interesting idea to it. It starts off by the looks of it as a side-scrolling action platformer with a touch of run and gun to it too, and then you jump in a car and it becomes a top-down racer. You then switch into a motorbike and then onto a speedboat and then it seems to become an isometric racer instead. I like the idea of that switch of perspectives and gameplay styles as you go along. 
Whether it will pull it off and be any good, obviously I don't know, but it sells for £9.99 and looks like one of those interesting curiosities you stick on your wish list and wait for a sale for. Then we have a game called Astrologaster, which is from Plugin Digital. This is set in 16th century London during the time of the plague and sees you playing as an astrologer, Simon Foreman, who once all the other doctors leave London, decides to set himself up as a doctor of medical astrology. You need to examine the skies and choose astrological interpretations to help advise your patients. You'll be solving a variety of your patients' problems, ranging from Elizabethan terror plots to foul diseases. You'll need to win the favour of your patients or potentially ruin their lives and you will be advising 14 different characters trying to win yourself a medical license in the process. It's fully voice acted and goes for a sitcom style in terms of its comedy, includes renaissance era music and has quite an interesting pop-up book style to the art. It's selling for just £8.99 and again looks like quite a fun quirky little title. I'm before I gain my medical license, for I am not a quack sir, I am a true doctor. <laughs> Silence. Constable, shackle this man and take him from hence to jail. Uh, but sir, uh, pray afford me the chance to- Next on the 18th is a game called Azure Lane Crosswave. This is a 3D action shooter where you are customizing your fleet of ships and then recruiting girls to take on the enemy. There are four game modes included, such as Extreme Battle Mode, and this is based on a mobile game, although as far as I can see, the mobile game itself was a side-scrolling shooter, whereas this has been redesigned to include fully 3D environments. And then we have Anodyne 2 Return to Dust. Now Anodyne was a fun little action adventure game with a top down perspective. Well this sequel seems to take those 2D routes and merge it with 3D areas too. It says it combines the cinematic storytelling of 3D games with the tight design and easy to pick up play of 2D action adventure. You'll be traversing cities, valleys and wastelands, transforming into a car to cross distances and all of this is done with pixelated lo-fi landscapes. And yeah, the art style is actually really quite intriguing. It's selling for £19.99, so hopefully it would be a more fleshed out experience than its predecessor, and it comes out on the 18th. Next is Fallen Legion Revenants, which is the second Fallen Legion game to come to the Switch, but the first one actually bundled in two games together, so technically I suppose it's the third. This is a game that we'll be reviewing next week, and it's a side-scrolling tactical RPG where you take on the role of two characters as they battle against a dictator, one of whom manages your troops on the battlefield, whereas the other one is involved in the political side of things. Your troops are called exemplars and you will use those in real-time battles on a 2D plane, learning new moves called death blows and recruiting further exemplars as you go. It's selling for £35.99 and comes out on the 19th in Europe, although I believe it's a bit earlier in North America, around about the 16th. And as I said, do look out for our review of this game next week. ...locked away in a castle in the sky. All I can do now is fight to get him back. Have fun traversing the woods. Roast a marshmallow for me. What did I tell you about getting cute? And then we have a game that I'm sure a few of you would have heard of already. It's called Thomas Was Alone. This has been out for a while on other platforms. I played it through to completion on the Vita, I believe it was. And it's a platform game where you play as a variety of shapes, each with their own abilities that will help you solve puzzles to move on to the next screen. What's interesting about it is the way that the narrative gives the shapes names and personalities and kind of tells their backstory as you go along. It's also done with a very simplistic art style, but the different bold colours used for each shape really do stand out. It's selling for £9.99, although there is 20% off of this price up until launch. And if you are looking for a good puzzle platform game, I would definitely recommend it, especially whilst that pre-order discount is in effect. Thomas led his friends to the creation matrix, the system which generated the worlds up above. He had a plan. They were going to redesign the world. Now I'm going to include this final one, as it does technically come out on the 19th. This is Persona 5 Strikers, although I must put a big asterisk next to its name and say that only the digital deluxe version comes out on the 19th, the base game comes out the following week. 
So in this deluxe version then, as well as the base game of course, you get the legacy background music pack and the all out attack pack. As well as that seemingly you get 4 days early access, I'm not sure why they've decided to do it that way but there you are. It's set of course in a Persona universe and is a Musou game where it says you join the Phantom Thieves and strike back against the corruption overtaking cities across Japan. Mark has reviewed this one for us already so I'm going to stick the link to that review in the top pinned comment. And like I said, this version comes out on the Friday. The prices you are seeing at the bottom of your screen are deluxe version prices. So if you just want the base game, don't buy this one yet. Wait until next week and buy it for that bit cheaper. Do you realize how dangerous a position you're in right now? So there you have it, there are a host of games that are either already out or are coming out on the Switch this week. Are you going to pick any of these up? Do any of them interest you? Please do let me know in the comment section below. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, stay safe of course, and until next time, happy gaming.